Welcome to another session of Nanotech Game Dev Stuff. Today's issue is how do you distribute points along a line and why is that even useful? In my case, I want to distribute units alongside a line so I can make a defense formation for my RTS game, but you can use this on a bunch of different stuff as well. Got inspired to do this by Zero K. So I'll explain that, and if you don't know, it is a open source RTS game, and it's a lot of fun to play with. It's very different from the traditional RTS genre. Quite interesting how it uses a line path to allow your units to be moved to that position. So I wanted to do that for my game as well. That's how I got the idea. This is the result of how it looks like in my project. So this is not about making units move in a formation, it's about units moving to a formation. So keeping units inside a formation it's more advanced stuff and not going to delve into that but if you are interested in doing that it basically the premise is to make a single unit leader all the other units and they are following it based on off offsets and the most complicated part is rotation of the units to be kept inside the formation here's an example of by Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds you can see that units are kept inside the formation and you can see how complicated this move pattern it is so the easiest way to do this is to not do it at all. <laughs> But if you plan to use my formation, you don't need anything at all, you just need their positions and they are going to move to that based on the pathway that the player has drawn, so very simple stuff. So let's see how you can do that. So let's start with the first step, which is to have a variables so we can store the things. Then we also want to store a node to the to be the line, which is just a simple line. And let's see the first the steps of this. So, so you have your unit selected here. You're going to draw a path and later the units should move to that path. So how can you do that? This is how you can draw the line here. So we are using the mouse input here. The first thing is you want to record the mouse global position and you want to check for the player to start right clicking. So whenever we start, we check if our formation path start is equal to vector zero and we use this as a gateway. So this is used as a gateway to start updating the formation path or not. We know that if the vector formation path start is equal to vector zero, we do not have any path at all. And we can start by first assign the formation path start, which is this guy up here. So then we can start to store the formation line points with the first formation path start. So this is going to be the first point. And we also update the line to the points as the formation line point, which currently only has the formation path start. So how you can keep adding points. So if our formation path start is not equal to vector to zero, which means we already started to draw the path somewhere, then it means we want to keep updating the formation path. So this is going to be kept calling whenever there's a mouse input event. So the formation line points is this guy here is going to be equal to our line to the position get points. So this is just we keep a real update to the line points. So what we want to do here is to first grab the last points of the line. And we can do this by calling the formation line points size minus one. So this is the index number for the last point of the formation line. Then we, what we're going to do, we're going to add another point if we have passed a distance threshold. So in this case, the distance is squared, so that is why it's a higher number, even though the, the points itself should be very short. So as you can see by the screen measurements, this is very small. But because it's squared, it is increased a lot. So why use distance squared? Because it's faster than using only distance. So then if our formation line point size is less than 32, so this is just a hard code limit that I did, temporary. If you want, you can do save this as a separate variable. So if the last point is more distance than to the mouse by 512, 
we're going to add a new point at that mouse global position. Later we can update the formation line points where the points we grab from the line to the node. So these points here are going to be stored on a separate variable here. So this is just for you to be able to draw the line points. This should take care of step two, which is to basically start to record the mouse position and to draw a line to D. And we are storing that inside our formation line points. So this should give us enough information to then move the units, which is our step three, which is when we move our units back here. So I'm going to decrease the opacity just we have here some preview of what's going on. We can see here the line and the result of the units. So how do you spread units inside this path? And this is when we release the mouse, we want to have some cup of code here. So this is all the only code that I have that basically does the formation. So whenever you release the mouse, we're going to start by creating an index value. And I did minus one just so I can put the the calculator here on top, otherwise you have to put on the bottom for start at zero, because the first index cannot be skipped. So this is just a nice way for you to start calculating using this on top. You put it at minus one. So for each unit inside the selection, we want to first make sure we have a formation path to move to. That is why we do if formation light point size is higher than one. Then we know that the player has already drawn some points and we can move our units based on that formation path. So the formation path size, this variable here is going to be equal to our formation line points size. The second one is unit selection size, which is basically equal to our selection size. So selection here is an array with all the units we have selected. And you can see how you can do that type of selection with my previous videos here on the channel. So here, this is quite important. We have path size per unit which is the formation path size divided by the unit selection size minus one. This here will be used to get units to spread along the path. So we want this value to be snapped because otherwise it's going to be very granular. We only want just two decimals should be enough for the precision itself. So here minus one is so we can reduce the selection size so it can fit along the path better. So based on my tests, if you don't do minus one and you just use the entire unit selection size, you're going to see that units will not end at the final point of the path. So how this works is we know that by each 2.15 parts of the path, we're going to have a unit. And if we use the integer converter here, we can basically strip away all the decimals. And when you strip away the decimals, you get the path and reminder which means that from the second path to the next, based on the point 15, we're going to have the position on the middle of the path. So let's say we have here a path and we have some points. So we know we want to put the unit in the position of 4.5 of the path here. So we have, we need the path start position and the end position. So by doing here an integer conversion with the path size per unit multiplied by the unit index, we are going to get the, the start path position. And the ending path position should be the start path position plus one. So we know it's always the next path point. So we want to place the units on the 4.5 position. So we have a coordinate for this position and a coordinate for this position. We know that we want to learn these two values. So we need to uh, get the value from this position, this position. So if we want to place the units on the 4.5 parts of the path here, so we know that stripping away the decimals, we get only the four, that's the starting points. So we know that the units should start from path point four. Then next, we want the next path point. We know that is the starting path point plus one. Then we get the next path point. So we already have a line segment here to move the units. Now the next question is by how much should the unit move to? So we are going to use a lerp function to interpolate between these two path positions and we are going to use the remainder decimal here as a, a weight value to, to the lerp function so we can actually do this. So the lerp function is going to say interpolate between the path point 4 and 5 
by 0.5 so it's going to return this position here so now we have the coordinates from the lerp function which we can basically assign back to the units so the units know exactly where to move we're basically saying start from this path point to this path point and do a 0.5 lerp between these two coordinates the result coordinates we are going to use to move our units from the selection to that position. So the first path position is going to be equal to the unit number on the selection multiplied by the path size per unit. So that result is going to be converted to an integer and that is going to strip away all the decimals. So we know that is the start path index. Next, we want the ending path index, so it wants to grab a line segment. So that's going to be equal to our start path index plus one. So here, the clamp here is just we avoid extrapolating the maximum size of the formation path size. So minus one here because this is an index, so this starts at zero, not one. And when we say formation path size, it actually is grabbing the line points dot size, so it's going to start at one. That's why you do minus one here, because we want to convert this as an index to our next function here for the lerp function. So the lerp function is telling you from where to where and by how much. So we want to start by the first path point to the next path point. We're going to lerp between the start point and then ending point by this amount. So the position in the path segment should be equal to our start position from the formation line points to the end in path points and the result should be clamped to this here, which basically is using the decimal number. Next we just project a ray cast here to the terrain collision mesh, which basically should provide us with a coordinate to move the units. So we are converting the 2D drawn position to 3D on the terrain collision mesh. And this here is just the code that I use for my units to move. So I basically just set the navigation agent to the raycast result position. And false here is just an argument for my function to not randomize the end path because it should be precise on the path position point. So that's basically how you do it. And also the last thing is after you have done all your input commands, you should place this piece of code here that is going to basically to reset back the line and the formation points to zero back again. So this is going to first set the formation path start back to zero. It's going to reset the line points to an empty array. And we're going to set the line to the node points to the formation line points. So it's basically is nothing. So the line is going to be clear from the screen. So that is basically what you have to do once you release the mouse click. And I separate this code here because it's bundled with a lot of different stuff for my project. So just for you guys to know, you need this piece of code here on the function of the inputs after everything you have done. So as you can see, it's pretty simple stuff to just move the units to their respective path positions. So by now you should have a formation path to allow your units to move in. And it looks pretty nice visually. So hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you. I'll see you on the next one.